spaghetti sauce for our cauliflower pizza and Ceci got a little ahead and she went on ahead and started making it so now I'm gonna get her to show us how she did it so you can catch up with us and you can make it yourself. So. <sighs> Sorry. Where are we at? Okay it's very simple basically your basics are onions, garlic and celery then you chopped everything first and then you add your tomato, cel oh, I'm sorry, tomato, uh, pumpkin and carrots a preference. I like it because it makes the sauce thicker so it gives it like a texture and it's super healthy so I do those and that's it and then you just let it cook. I do instead of using like 10 tomatoes I also add a tomato paste because it's just a concentrate. Try to find the organic tomato paste the one that has the citric acid as a preservative which is a lot better than any other ones that they have so um, that's it. <laughs> Okay, now, you said we use pumpkin, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for the pumpkin we use, do we just take a Halloween pumpkin, cut it up, throw it in there, or do you do something special to it? The pumpkin is the leftover Halloween pumpkin that we, we bought three huge pumpkins, and we chop everything and froze it. So we have a bunch of pumpkin left over, and so I add it to my soups, I add it to my sauces, so it's, it's okay. in cute. Let me see if I can just answer our question for us. <laughs> okay, we use frozen pumpkin. I just grab it from the freezer uncooked and then you do it raw. And it so tastes. just take the pumpkin out of the freezer mm -hmm. and add it to it and you use a blender which is probably still sitting here behind me and you blend it all up. Now we didn't get to quantities of anything. Yeah. How many Roma tomatoes? I, I use five Roma tomatoes, two stacks of celery, three large carrots, one large onion, uh, about four stacks of garlic, um, I would say about four cups of um, pumpkin, frozen pumpkin. Did I miss anything? Your tomato paste. Oh, no, just one little. This is the tomato paste that I'm using. Just one. And water. How much water? I would say like a whole, like two, two cups of these. That's two cups, so. This what she means cups. is four cups of water. <laughs> now, for this part, we'll make sure to list all the um, the details in the description below. So she kind of she started this part before we started recording, so that way you can. I am you not know, a have professional everything. video maker, by no means. But you are a professional chef. Not either. <laughs> well, it tastes like you are. I have a passion for it. That's it. Mmm. What flavor is this? We're gonna go ahead and do our homemade almond meal with just natural sliced almonds. I that's what I got. But you, you can get their raw almonds. So just add it to your processor. Mine is a small one. Some people have big ones. It's better. And a little bit of time. That's like about almost two cups in there. And we're gonna go and blend. You can see. You can see. Okay, so we have our um, almond meal. I'm gonna make. Because this is a, a Daniel Fest recipe, we have to do what is called vegan eggs, which is these uh, ground flax seeds. In this cup, I have two tablespoons of flax seed, and I'm gonna put three tablespoons of water to make the vegan egg to add to our recipe crust. Here are all the rackets. That's the first make all the noise. Hey, Karsten. So just, it has to be ground flax seeds or ground chia seeds. And then just stir it. Better with a spoon. And then let it sit there. It's gonna get really thick. It almost feels like the texture of the egg. And we're gonna go ahead and ground our cauliflower. After you thought your cauliflower, you gotta remove all the water you have. So I make a little just swing my scissors and squeeze the bag as much as I can. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in my processor. So my processor is not huge, so I have to do a little bit at a time. Doesn't take much. It's gonna look like a pieces of rice. That's the texture that you're looking for. You can look and see. 
<laughs> it's not much, it's just a few pulses. It's a one pound of cauliflower per recipe. All my cauliflower is done, so we have to move it to a container. It's down below in there. I just want to address that you probably want to triple the recipe so you can save some for the uh, for later. All right, now this is recipes that, that is really easy to freeze. So as you'll see from what we're doing, we're actually making triple the batch. Instead of just one serve, we're making three. That way we can have a little bit extra so we can freeze some and maybe even make an extra pizza tonight. So I have my vegan egg ready, which is the flaxseed with uh, water. We just put everything there. I have my almond meal. It's just a half a spoon of I'm sorry, half a cup of then We have a pink Himalayan salt, it's a half teaspoon. We also have a garlic salt. We are using whole oregano. Alright, and ready to mix. This texture looks really good, so I don't think it will need more water. If you do add water, you don't need to add more than three tablespoons. Well, the recipe calls for three tablespoons of flaxseed. Two tablespoons are for the vegan egg that we made, and one tablespoon is the dry that you just gotta add it to your mix. And you're ready to go ahead and mix it. It's ready to put in the pan. I wanna try. It's good. All right, we got all oh, oh, this ready. It is best to use parchment paper so it doesn't stick. You decide the thickness, but uh, the first time I tried it, I did it a quarter inch and it was a little bit too thin. We just put the pizza crust in the oven with no toppings for 30 minutes and then we're gonna do 15 minutes on the other side. Alright, the crust we cooked for about 30 minutes, so let's peek in and look at it. Alright, now we're about to take it out, flip it over. We just flip it over, now we're gonna cook it for an additional 15 minutes. So 15 minutes, and then we can go ahead and put our toppings. All right, now everything is finished, so we're gonna put the pizza together and then put it in the oven and let it bake for about five minutes because everything's already cooked, so it's just gotta heat up enough to melt the cheese a little bit and then bon appetit. Okay, I have all my toppings ready here. Because it's a tofu type of cheese, it doesn't melt like mozzarella melts, but it's still really good. You can hear it crunchy. There you go. That's you ready? Alright, so that's our cauliflower pizza recipe, and now I'm about to go try this out and see how amazing it tastes. We just finished almost the whole pizza, and it is very delicious. You would never think that this was actually a vegetable-based cauliflower crust, because it does not taste anything like cauliflower. What do you think about it? I love it. It's really good. Yeah. I want to try next the vegetarian type that has the other cheese, but this is great. <laughs> now, we have to go in the kitchen. But if you happen to try this or make it, please let us know how it turns out, how you like it. And if you're on Instagram, tag us in a picture of it and let us see what it looks like.